Okay, a traditional toolchain for any given operating system traditionally comprised of the uh, editor, a compiler, a linker, and possibly an installer. And on modern systems these days, this is usually contained in a single integrated development environment, or IDE, such as Visual Studio on Windows and Xcode on Mac OS. A modern toolchain is much more complex than that because uh, of the need for automation and cross-platform builds and uh, management of the, the builds and the source code in general. So uh, the first thing we have to concern ourselves with is because all of these functions are typically done remotely. So uh, we need to be able to set up remote access and which includes authentication, meaning proving to the remote system our identity and then authorization where based on our identity the uh, remote system decides whether we're actually allowed to do a certain action or not. Then uh, many operating systems these days come with package managers or um, um, also uh, app stores and but uh, traditional package managers also serve as dependency trackers meaning that when you install a certain package to develop software, for instance, that tool is, is aware of the fact that there are certain dependencies that are also need to be installed. That will notify you and automatically install those dependencies as well. And of course, uh, modern software development is unthinkable without version control systems. So a version control system is a very, very integrated and very important part of a modern tool chain. And actually the major uh, way of uh, transporting source code to and from systems that need it. Then eventually a uh, source code needs to be turned into an executable system and that can happen on several platforms possibly with the same source code base. So the um, configuration and uh, build systems are in uh, charge of that and the typical output of such a system is a project file for any given IDE with possible one or more compilers um, available to them. Um, and uh, modern software also, of course, usually will not be written from scratch. It uses a lot of frameworks uh, such as uh, .NET, or I will introduce you to another nice uh, C++ framework called Qt, and uh, additional libraries that uh, can be used for uh, testing or mathematical manipulations or any other um, need that, uh, again, doesn't uh, have to be written from scratch. All of this has to be put together and ultimately before it has to be uh, put into uh, production, delivered to customers, has to be tested. So test frameworks are an important part of a modern tool chain as well. And automation is uh, the uh, uh, current forefront of the, uh, of the field. And uh, so continuous integration uh, really takes the whole tool chain and automates everything with a single click of a button from the uh, retrieval of source code from a version control system, configuring and building on any target system and uh, automatically running tests and packaging the software for deployment. So continuous integration tools are a ever more important part of modern tool chains as well. Coming back to the uh, start of the tool chain uh, authentication, we uh, at Kentucky State University here in computer science use a protocol called Secure Shell. Uh, not only we are using this, this is the industry standard, and it's based on public key encryption, not on passwords, meaning that uh, you have a public key that is available and will be placed on all remote systems you need access to, and then a private key that never leaves your possession and uh, there is a challenge response mechanism there that ultimately proves to the remote system that only the holder of the public key could uh, uh, be the generator and the uh, uh, respondent to that challenge. And uh, based on uh, this match, the system will grant you access. Um, we will use the uh, uh, current standard default, which is the RSA algorithm with a key bit of 2048 length, which is still secure enough for um, non-security 
applications. On Windows, we'll be using a tool called Putty, and on Linux and macOS, we'll use a tool or a um, system called OpenSSH. As far as package managers goes on uh, Windows, there traditionally has really not been a package manager. There is an app store now, but that's not a package manager in the traditional sense. There are several available as add-ons to uh, macOS, and uh, I will introduce you to uh, MacPorts as the package manager of choice for uh, macOS. And since uh, our setup at Kentucky State University here is based on Ubuntu uh, on Linux, we will use the um, apt package manager and uh, you will interact with uh, that. As far as version control goes, so we are in the lucky position these days that uh, all major players in the software industry has uh, have agreed that uh, Git as a distributed version control system is the most capable and powerful system available to date. So uh, all major IDEs ship with Git integration. And uh, I will show you how to uh, use authentication via SSH to get access to remote Git servers. And uh, those Git servers then will, uh, based on uh, SSH authentication, um, do authorization and hosting at uh, uh, our department will use Gitolite as a, uh, a very lean and small system with a potential transition of GitLab uh, um, later in the year. And then, uh, however, I will also um, show you how to create uh, your own GitHub account, which increasingly serves as the host of your portfolio um, where actually employers can go and look at source code that you have created. Um, all of this can be done on the command line, but there are um, several very nice graphical user interface tools, and I will introduce you to probably the most powerful of those, which happens to be cross-platform for both Mac OS and Windows, which is called SourceTree. As far as build systems goes, we use also a cross-platform build system called CMake. And uh, this has the ability to create several backends um, uh, project files. Uh, most notably, of course, Visual Studio on Windows and Xcode on Mac OS. We will, uh, however, introduce you to a cross-platform IDE called CLine made by JetBrains, which you as uh, uh, students have uh, free access to as well. As far as IDEs and compilers go, as I uh, already mentioned, uh, we'll use a cross-platform IDE for C++ called CLine, uh, but with different compilers on different platforms. On uh, Windows, to keep things uh, manageable and uh, small, we will use the minimalist GNU system for Windows, or MinGW for short together with CLine. On macOS, we will use the uh, uh, default compiler shipped with Xcode called CLang. Again, we will not be using Xcode. We will be using CLine, but um, the uh, compiler will be provided by uh, Xcode. And uh, then on Linux, we have two situations here. If you are on a uh, local system that has a graphical user interface available to you, then of course you can use CLine on Linux as well. The default compiler there will be the GNU compiler collection or GCC. Connecting to our remote system, stu.cs.kysu.edu, you will still be using GCC, of course, and we have text based editors um, that can serve as an IDE replacement, most notably Nano and VI, that we will encounter. When it comes to frameworks, uh, we will using we will using a cross-platform C++ framework called Qt, which provides a very elegant event system uh, to us that is mostly used in its graphical user interface library. Uh, but it has uh, different additional components in its uh, in its framework, and uh, we will most notably in our classes also use it to read and write XML files. Uh, and verify those with XML schema. And uh, most notably, however, and more importantly, for a tool chain like ours, we will be also using this for unit testing. Um, speaking of unit testing, you will encounter a design philosophy for software called 
designed by contract and that heavily relies on um, assertions to be made that have to be true at any given time the software executes. And uh, in order to control and test for these assertions, we use advanced capabilities uh, that go beyond what C++ usually provides for assertions. And this will be done with a library called Boost um, or a sub-library uh, uh, for assertions in uh, the collection of libraries called Boost. Um, the Boost libraries are peer-reviewed, uh, extremely high-quality source code, many of which eventually actually make it into the C++ standard library. As far as test frameworks go, we uh, will then actually use um, all the previous components I mentioned, most notably Boost and Qt um, and CMake together to uh, um, um, create and uh, monitor and then automatically execute tests. Uh, so uh, Boost will provide assertion monitoring. QTest will provide the framework to write and generate tests and test data and CTest will uh, then uh, be used to automatically um, uh, run and uh, monitor those tests, which is part of CMake. Looking a little bit into the future, this is more a graduate level um, uh, topic, but uh, um, one of the major movements uh, uh, these days is indeed to automate the whole tool chain as much as humanly possible, meaning that the developers are also responsible for the operations of the uh, um, software from development to deployment, uh, and for short, this is called DevOps. And the main DevOps continuous integration t uh, tool that uh, I'll use uh, uh, in our graduate level class and will introduce students to is uh, called Jenkins. So this is something that you may want to look at and familiarize yourself because um, many, many organizations in the software industry these days use uh, Jenkins for continuous integration. So that concludes our overview over the uh, tool chain. And uh, with uh, the uh, next uh, section, we'll jump right in and I'll demonstrate how to set up authentication um, with uh, OpenSSH and Putty.